All right, so uh, what we're going to do today is uh, we were introduced to the idea of angular or rotational motion last time. We didn't really do any practice on it. So we're going to do some practice on that today. Um, uh, I think I'm going to get into like the next set of equations that we can do with that, and then I'll give you time to work on your syllabus. Um, looking ahead, just a reminder that um, presentations start April 7th. Um, and other than any like time that you want to use that would other be wise be used for syllabus time, uh, we're not going to have any any additional days like we did last time for working on the project. So make sure you uh, you have that in mind. And here in a minute, I'll hand back I'll hand out your syllabus so that you we can talk about this. Um, let me just show you something real quick. Uh, if you go to our um, oh, oops. If you go to our page, um, I think you've seen this before, but I've got this folder for the culminating project. Um, if you ever want to find those uh, that checklist that I gave you last time, just click on the, the culminating project assignment, and I put the video that I, that I had you watch, uh, the presentation schedule, the rubric if you want to look at it, and all the, these are all the things that I talked about. Uh, that you need to make sure that you have on it. So if you want to look at that uh, for reference, uh, that is posted here. Um, I want to point out something real quick here. There's, there's a lot of words there, but I'm just going to tell you what it means. Um, if you look here, there, the presentation rubric is posted here. Um, and I'd just like to point out, um, if you look at the way the rubric is, is set up, um, there's every... Uh, part has a meet standard and an exceed standard. Um, and the idea is I want to have find a way to capture like if you go above and beyond, right? I want to, I want to find a way to uh, capture that in the grade. So the way that uh, this works, if you meet all the standards, um, the grade comes out to be uh, 91. Um, so I'm just telling you that because um, I want to tell you what the difference is between like a a C project, a B project, and an A project, right? So uh, C projects are projects that get the job done, but I pretty much could have read one of your sources and probably have learned the same thing. Yes. I do have a good one. Yes. Yeah. Um, so uh, C, C projects are, are, are things that have, uh, uh, you can get the job done, but I probably could have uh, like just read one of your sources and figured it out. Um, B products are really good, solid projects that really um, uh, uh, kind of advance questions and say that you know what you're talking about. Uh, but the A products are ones that go above and beyond in some way or another, right? Uh, so they either have a very creative way of, of presenting it, or perhaps you have like a, a particularly um, interesting way of thinking about it. Um, so I, I, I just give that to you. As far as examples go, what I so I have if you did you watch the video by right? so, so like the uh, on there I had some examples of the uh, like the visual part of it and uh, and I kind of showed you how there are visuals that uh, met the requirements but then there are visuals that kind of exceed the requirements. Um, generally, if you're talking about for the other parts of of the rubric, um, so. Um, I what I've given is like it's A's go to you either have a an outstanding visual or a visual that's sort of like really good at, at conveying a point or conveying the point you're trying to get or makes me think about it in a slightly different way. Or you just have like you know what you're talking about backwards and forward and uh and like by by talking to you, it's clear that you learned a lot, it's also clear that uh uh, you kind of you you you've done something to make it your own, um, as opposed to just kind of like it's, to some extent you're always like reading what other people have to say and sort of pre pre presenting it, but there's been some synthesis done. Uh, maybe that maybe that's not particularly what you were asking for for a, for an example. Is there something more specific? Yeah. Yeah, if, and if you uh, if you've got questions about any of this, you really want to make sure that you're uh, you're meeting uh, like you're doing well in the points of improvement. Please do feel free to talk to me. Uh, I'm 
I usually give about three one hundred percent to you. It's not like a rule; it's just generally what ends up happening. I, there, there are a fair number of A's every year, but in terms of one hundred percent, those are those are like really good spots. Yeah, like month after we are all probably all the time. Yeah, I don't mean like I, there's more A's than that, but like a hundred. It, it's kind of I like to give you this um, this breakdown um, because. I just want you to, to understand that, like, this isn't something where you meet the requirements and you get a full credit, right? Um, I wanted to really kind of want you to kind of put some of yourself in here. Other questions about this? Cool. All right. Uh, you can go ahead and get out your notes from last time. And while you do that, I am going to hand out your your syllabus. If you get this, you might uh, look at, I think it's the second page. Um, there's an equation to see on the second page. None of that needs to be memorized. At this point, you know how to suffer. We talked about, I want to say, the first three or four lines of that. I'm going to recommend more so than uh, than usual. I'm going to recommend that you like tear off that those first two pages because when you're doing uh, your homework, it's probably going to be helpful to have that equation. So right uh, at this point, you've learned to about here, right? So remember what we said was we said, you may remember what this little scripty L means. That's the arc length, right? So arc length is R times the angle. We've learned that just like you have regular velocity, you have angular velocity, and that's the equation that connects to them. And then we talked about just like you have uh, regular acceleration or translational acceleration, you have angular acceleration. And then this it connects the, at least the uh, translational um, tangential acceleration to angular acceleration. And then the other two uh, we talked about were these, right? Um, centripetal acceleration is V squared over R or omega squared R. Uh, I just want you to notice the way I wrote it on here. So centripetal acceleration, is uh, usually the word uh, that we're used to using. Sometimes the book will talk about radial acceleration. They're the same thing, right? It's called radial acceleration because it goes along the radius. But centripetal acceleration or radial acceleration are the same thing. And then remember, we talked about tangential acceleration. All right. You might remember what uh, unit we are uh, measuring our angles with. Radian. Anybody remember why we're measuring our angle with radian? What's that? Yeah, it, it, yeah it's uh, a natural unit, right? It's not something that's uh, like 360 degrees of the A up, right? You can actually, though, define uh, radian with a pretty simple equation. Okay. What I want to do here, and I know I'm just handing out a bunch of things here, but these are the practical problems I want to The 
the other fabric problems I want to do in this strip that kind of help us make sense out of the equations that we've already talked about. Okay. When you get this, I'd like you to see if we can maybe try and do a picture known and unknown and figure out what we're going to do. All right. So the sun, the sun subtends an angle of half a degree relative to us on Earth, and it's 150 million kilometers away. Estimate the radius of the sun. All right, what does that mean? Now the idea is, when I say it subtends an angle, right? Remember, it's an arc length, and it's an arc length uh, that, that sort of corresponds to that um, sliver of the circle, right? So the idea is a lot of times when we measure things in the sky, so a lot of astronomical calculations are, uh, they're measured with angles, right? Because the idea is here we are on Earth. We got a ruler here. Um, here we are on Earth, and the idea is if I look at the sun, right? The sun appears to take up an angle of 0.5 degrees. What that means is it's saying here that. saying that if I'm here on the Earth and I look at the sun 150 million miles away, or kilometers away, so that's 150 times 10 to the 6 kilometers away. It's saying that this angle is All right, now that I've got that picture, see what you can do with knowns and unknowns. Let's start here. Well, hang on. I was you 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 want to do like soak a toe with it? Yeah. You could. Um, I want I want to uh, I want to illustrate the concept you were talking about. So I want to not do that. But in theory, you could. That's right. So what we're looking for, it says the diameter of the sun, but what's the diameter? It's really the arc length of this circle, right? Or, or this, uh, of this sliver of the circle. So we're trying to find the arc length if the radius of the circle is 
150 times 10 to the six kilometers. And it turns out I'm not going to bother uh, converting my kilometers because um, the units will work out. I'll show you in a second. But so we can use we can use this equation, right? We're trying to find L. We know R, so we can use L equals R theta. But can I use theta equals five degrees? No, I cannot because this equation works in radians, right? So remember, we have this uh, this conversion here. There are 360 degrees and two pi radians. Pardon me. There are 360 degrees and two pi radians. So if I do a conversion here, I can say, okay, 360 degrees, two pi radians. So to get this five degrees in radians, I'm multiplying by two, phi, two pi and then dividing by 360. Uh, is it 0.5? Sorry, thank you. So I get something like 8.73 times 10 to the negative third radians. You cannot, if you want, you can put it in terms of pi. That's true. That you can, that's fine. So if I do this right, then I can say that L is equal to R, 150 times 10 to the sixth kilometers times 8.73 times 10 to the negative third radians. there. Now I want you to realize, right, conceptually maybe it's hard to get your mind around, but mathematically it's pretty easy. Go ahead, Malachi. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So this right now is the diameter. You're right. Uh, yes, but when you're talking about such a small angle at such a far radius, it's all an estimate anyway. Um, so, and the curvature of, when I'm talking about a small angle, the curvature of this isn't going to be much. But yes, in, in technically you are correct. Now, I just want to say one other thing about this. Technically, if you look at these units, what is it? The units actually come out to be kilometers radians. Uh, why can I turn that into kilometers? Do you remember? Radians are not really a unit, right? Radians are just, they indicate that we're talking about an angle, but radians, you can always cancel them out because they're not really a unit, okay? So, okay, so yeah, let, but let's be clear. So the diameter is this, so the radius would be half of this. So, Something like that. It's like that, that uh, problem because I think it kind of helps you get in your mind what a radian is, right? It helps you get in your mind how to get from degrees to radians, and then it helps you get in your mind like physically what we're talking about. Uh, but yes, uh, Malachi's right. Technically, this is an arc length. It's not a straight line. Uh, but when you're talking about half a degree, uh, 
the actual curve of the arc isn't going to be that much. Okay. All right, let's see what we can do with two. Who says a bicycle has wheels of diameter 68 centimeters? If the bicycle travels 92 kilometers, how many rotations does the wheel make? All right, see what you can do with this one first. Your partner, what you're thinking about knowns and unknowns. All right, anyone want to try, so when, I, when we're thinking about known, knowns and unknowns, right, the key thing is kind of translating what we know into variables that we can use equations with. Anyone have one we can do? Go ahead, Sohai. 34 centimeters, and I'll go ahead and do this in meters this time. Okay, what else? What do you think that 92 kilometers, or I'll go ahead and put it as 92,000 meters, what do you think that is? Go ahead, Drake, what are you thinking? Okay, you could do it that way, yes. Uh, if you remember from our... So x minus x naught, which in other words is delta x. Remember, we can say that's also arc length, right? Specifically, right, if you think about this, right? So you think about a wheel that's turning. Um, oh, I have a wheel back there, but I'll give that a second. But if you think about a wheel that's turning, right? If a wheel is turning, um, it's... The, the amount that it's turning is, is going to be an arc length, right? You, let me actually, let me get a wheel real quick. rockets right so what's happening here right is this wheel right as it's little turn let's let's talk about a partial turn to begin with right so i'll do it this way so that you can see it right if i do a partial turn with this wheel so if this wheel goes half a rotation right you see that the arc length that it traveled through was half a meter because this is a this has a circumference of a meter right 
So, uh, so the arc length though continues, right? If I go all the way around one arc length, that's going to be one meter. If I go around another arc length, that's going to be another meter, right? So what we can say in this case is even though this is tra uh, this is moving multiple times, right? We can still say that the arc length it travels through is 92,000 meters. It's a really long arc length. It's an arc length that corresponds to many revolutions. But it still is an arc length. It's just a very long arc length. So what can we do with that then? Take a look at your equations. What can we do with this? Go ahead, Becky. Yes. So you're essentially just uh, rearranging this equation. Uh, L over R, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so I'm going to get uh, 2.7 times 10 to the fifth radians. How is that going to give me revolutions? Yeah. Yep. So now this is my angle in radians, right? So I can say that one or two pi radians is equal to one revolution. And again, this is something that it's also on your equation sheet. And I'm also giving it to you here, right? You'll get used to it, but you don't really need to memorize it. I'll give it to you, right? So what I'm doing is I'm converting this to revolutions by dividing by 2 pi. That's what I got. Yeah. You can do that. Yeah. You, you can certainly do it. It ends up being mathematically the same. Yeah. I like doing it this way because I'm trying to, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to get us used to using the uh, symbols we're used to using, but it's all, it's all the same. Okay. Let's try. Uh, let's try something that's uh, that's going to be just a little bit more. Um, so we're going to have a wheel of a certain uh, radius and a certain acceleration, certain angular acceleration. Uh, and I'm going to ask three questions about it. So see what you can do with this. Again, the way I start is I start by Taking a look at the symbols you have and see if you can relate those numbers to symbols you have.
Tell your partner what you think the knowns and unknowns are here. All right. What you got for knowns and unknowns, Emma Cooper? Okay. All right, so let me let's be careful with the uh, let me make sure that I'm understanding you correctly. Which symbol did you use here? You used AC. I think we're actually going to use and this is where it might be helpful. I kept my notes from last time, it might be helpful here if it's radians per second squared. So AC is going to still be it's still a translational quantity, meters per second squared AC is. Uh, if it's radians per second squared, we're going to say that's an alpha. Which is the fish. Right. And then similarly, we're going to say that radian per second, that's the omega, which looks like the W. All right. What's the difference between what part A is looking for and what part B is looking for? Anyone know? Go ahead. Uh, go ahead, so let's... Yeah, so AT and AC is what we're looking for, right? So AT is going to be uh, R alpha. And AC is going to be omega squared R. And again, if you look at this, technically the units that come out are meters radians per second squared. But radians, you can always ignore those. So this will come out with units of meters per second squared. And this one will come out with radian squared per second squared meter, which again would come apply to a meter per second squared. Is that all right? How can an object have two different accelerations? Now I'll tell you what to try. Yeah. yeah, so the, the point is, right, you're going in a circle, right? Remember the deal is tangential acceleration points tangent to the circle. That's my 15.6. Centripetal, even if something is going at a constant speed, it still has to be changing directions, right? And so remember, centripetal points towards the center. And in this case, it's 4.16. Yeah. Did I not square it? You're right. I'm sorry. Mm. 
so that makes my drawing no longer uh, <laughs> no longer to scale, but that's okay. You might know how we'd find the actual total acceleration of this. What did you say, Becky? You, well, you can't. You can only add them if they're pointing the same way. Yes. Remember, the idea here is if you've got vectors pointing, they're perpendicular vectors pointing the same way. I can do like the, the I just draw on the parallelogram method here, right? This is going to be my total acceleration pointing that way, right? So that's a triangle where we can say that the total acceleration squared is equal to the, I'm just doing Pythagorean theorem, right? I'm not gonna ask you to do this very often, but I, I want you to know, I want you to, to see that there's a connection I could also ask you to find the angle, but I don't really know what the angle is. So we just stop there. Uh, meters per second squared. So it would be, it would be, um, you act, you set your, your axis when you're dealing with a circle, you set your axis at, with the origin at the point on the circle. And instead of X and Y, you have radial and tangent. So um, how would you word it? I suppose you could say so many degrees toward the, toward the radius from, you know what? I, I don't know how you'd word it, uh, but but the way you like the way if you were really like if you were programming this for example, the way you do it is you would you would treat the uh, the axis as a as a a rotating axis, right? And instead of x and y, you'd have radius and tangent, and those would just be following it along. All right. Other questions about this? Okay. Let me just, uh, I don't think that you need to take uh, further notes on this, but let me just show you one other thing in your, on your equation sheet that you now know what to do with if you think about it. Okay. We're going to skip down to this part of your equation sheet. I want you to take a look at it and I want you to realize that you already know how to do this, right? So you've seen these three equations before. What have I done? I've, take, I've taken all the translational velocities, turned them into angular omegas, right? I've taken all the translational accelerations, turned them into angular alphas. X's become thetas, right? V's become omegas, A's become alphas. It's the exact same thing we did last time. What we've done here is we've just uh, we've just uh, turned them into the angular counterpart. Okay? The last thing that I want to do together before giving you some more time is I would like to um, try one problem with the I have any questions before I go on to that? I did not print out this problem because I printed out these. Uh, I thought we were going to do these reviews last class or these uh, practice problems last class. So uh, you're going to have to look at this problem on the screen here. Um, 
All right, so we talked about, uh, kind of talking about, uh, like, remember when we did the um, put water in a bucket back when we were doing circular motion, we talked about how the water could stay in a bucket because of the inertia, right? So um, pilots can be tested like for G-forces, essentially using this centrifuge method, right, where they put you into an object and they accelerate you, right? And so we're going to say that we're, we've got this whirling human centrifuge that starts at rest and takes one minute to turn through 20 complete revolutions before reaching its final speed. And let's just talk about A for a second. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to see now, again, now that we we have the other equations, I'd like you to see if you can set this one up. So start with the knowns and unknowns for this. print one of these so that I can write on it. Grab that and grab this on the printer while you're getting it. Give you a hint if you're if you look at your uh, your equation sheet right. If, so I organize these equation sheets very uh, uh, very specifically to help you out, right? So I put the rotational analog right next to the translational analog, right? So you know what velocity acceleration are, right? So if you forget what omega and alpha are. You just look what, what's right next to it, right? Omega is just like V, only it's for rotation. Alpha is just like A, only it's for rotation. So this can kind of help you the way I'm not disorganized. So tell your partner what you think for the knowns and unknowns. Right. Raylan, what knowns and unknowns you got? Okay. Um, fair enough. Now, if I said revolutions per minute, that would assume that it was constant the whole time, right? So what I'm going to say is if, if it is, the reason why I can't say that, a lot of times I can, but the reason I can't say that is because it starts at rest and then goes this far in that time. So it doesn't mean I was going 20 RPM the whole time. It means I was starting at zero and then I ended up going 20. Does that make sense? I don't think I can actually say that. Chris, what you got for no, no, no. Um, yeah, okay. 
is what? Because we're starting at rest. Good. And then while we're at it, I'll say one minute. So I'll say, so we know time is 60 seconds. No one want to try what the 20 complete revolutions is? So high. Ah, so you're saying, in essence, that theta is 20 revolutions, but then you're saying, okay, 20 revolutions, one revolution we know to be 2 pi radians. So 40 pi or what do you say it was? And I'm trying to find alpha, right? Okay, now it should be, we should be able to pick an equation. Which of these makes sense? Big chalupa. Yeah. So this is just like old, old times, right? Only new looking variables. But theta equals theta naught plus omega naught t plus one half alpha t squared. We'll assume that we're starting at a theta naught of zero, right? Just like we used to usually say that x naught was zero, we can usually say that theta naught is zero. So this term's gonna go away, this term's gonna go away. So I have theta equals one half alpha t squared or alpha is two theta over t squared. Okay. Next question. What was the final angular speed and RPM? Now, I, I just wanted to do this. So angular speed is still omega, right? So, but sometimes your book is going to either give you or ask you uh, RPMs instead of radians per second. So part B, we're going to find the answer in radians per second, then we're going to do a conversion. I'll show you how to do the conversion. Um, so, okay. So what is the final angular speed in RPM? Uh, so first of all, final angular speed means I'm looking for final omega. Which equation makes sense to do this? Old faithful. Um. So 
So you'll notice I also gave you, I, I don't know if you noticed on here, but I also gave you, I'm not ever gonna ask you to memorize this. This is the conversion RPM to radians per second, right? So all I can do is I can say, there's 0.1047 radians per second and one RPM. RPM again means just revolutions per minute. hope you think is that the math isn't too hard but some of the things but but, but what we're going to get practice on like I uh, the math will not trip you up in this in this unit unlike other units the math shouldn't trip you up in this unit what might trip you up is what unit goes with what symbol right and what do the symbols mean that's kind of where that's where this uh this unit, this is the trickiness in this unit, right? Um, if you take a look at your syllabus, so now you can do everything that's in that first um, shaded box. Um, you'll notice that my plan is uh, to do a homework quiz on this on Friday, is that the fifth yet Friday? Right, so um, so I'll give you today, and you'll have to take a ten minute time to work on that. But, uh, um, that's where uh, the key is. Um, they're doing the the uh, black and gold schedule is going to be weird the next couple weeks. It goes this week is going to be black, gold, black, gold, black, and then Monday will be black again. Tuesday will be gold, Wednesday will be new learning, and then Thursday will be gold. There's, they organized something during SRT that at SRT, there has to be a gold day. I created it Tuesday or Thursday, it has to be a gold day, but it wasn't going to be. And so they're, they're changing the schedule. So, yeah. All right. All right, so uh, you go ahead and get to work on that, and I will come around and answer questions on that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and I'll hand back to Tessie. Thank you. Yeah. 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 All right.